Hello, welcome back to the channel. And uh, another day indoors, uh, thanks to the very cold weather here in Germany outside. And a big thanks again to 247.golf for this wonderful indoor enclosure. If you're in the market for a bargain enclosure, don't look any further, I'll leave a link below. Today I want to uh, continue with what we've been talking about over the last few weeks and months, which is the data that I've been uh, getting since I've been working with Hackmotion. Hackmotion is a movement sensor which you attach to your wrist and hand, which will actually show you uh, the rotational uh, forces working in the golf swing during your swing, also the amount of flexion and extension that you have in your lead wrist during the swing, as well as ultra and radial deviation. <clears throat> Why are these things all so important, you, I hear you say? Well, basically, especially as a teacher, the more information I have, the easier it is to actually find out what's going on in the swing and how be and best to correct it. One of the things, though, that has surprised me, and this is really the theme today, is you know, what can we take from this information that we're getting from the hack motion, is the amount of uh, movement happening in the arms and wrists during the swing and the changes that you see in the graphs and the information from hat motion between individual players. As you can see, massive deviations from one player to the next and it's really kind of getting your head around what is actually happening in the golf swing and, and what does this actually mean for me teaching golf? What should I be teaching people in order to get a better understanding, better control over the golf club? Most certainly what we're seeing here is very, very different amounts of rotation. So by some players, you will actually find that in impact, their lower arms have not returned in any way back to their starting position. And therefore the club should be open at impact, but they are compensating for this through massive amounts of actual body rotation and also large amounts of what they call flexion in the swing. So it's basically they are balancing their swing out. Other players will actually get the club almost back to the same amount of rotation, getting the club face back square on the, on the ball, but they will have less body rotation and also less flexion in the wrist at impact. And if we start looking at it, amateur golfers who've probably struggling to get any rotation in at all by the time they get back to impact, then a lot of times we are actually seeing an awful lot of rotation in their arms, but at the same time flexion in the wrist, which kind of makes up for it. Obviously not the perfect way to hit a golf ball. You're never going to get the kind of pressure on the ball in order to get the ball speeds that you want. You're probably going to be adding too much loft to the club. But on one level, intuitively, the amateur golfer, even with a poor technique, is able to get the club face back pretty square on the golf ball. What hat motion is also telling us is these immense speeds of uh, rotation at impact. We're talking about the club moving through around about 180 degrees and uh, under 100 milliseconds, which would be 1.8 degrees per millisecond. And we are thinking in any way that we can consciously control that, then we're kidding ourselves. So this is also something you want to be kind of taking into the information pot when you're then making decisions about what it is that you want to change or improve in your golf swing. What it's doing for me is really almost causing me to move away from this kind of feeling of a body-led golf swing of your arms, your hands, and your golf club being guided by your body, almost to the point that they're moving around you like kind of floppy pieces of spaghetti. And as long as your body moves correctly, your arms and your club will know what to do. Most certainly, the way that you're moving your body in your golf swing is going to influence the way that your arms, your hands, and your clubs may, might even, even make it easier or harder for your arms and hands and club to move in the right planes and in the right angles towards the ball. But I think what we're seeing from hack motion is of 
definitely hitting on the head this idea that if you turn your body correctly, stay in plane with your body, that your arms and hands are going to take care of themselves. Simply not true. What it is also knocking on the head um, is this feeling that you can basically block your release, uh, hold the club face square for long periods of time in the golf swing in order to get that clean, straight hip through the golf ball doesn't happen. And we can't see this in amateur golfers, we can't see this in professional golfers. All golfers will have a relatively high rotational speed at impact, even the guys who are spooning the ball up in the air. It simply has to happen because you are not going to get the kind of rotation that you need out of the body alone. It's got to be coming out of the arms as well. So where is it that this, this kind of uh, new information is taking us? Well, the first thing is basically to see the work that your hips and your shoulders are doing um, separated maybe a little bit from the work that your arms and hands are doing. Also, you've got to get involved again with allowing your golf club to move and to change its plane and to change um, its angles and not get too worried about it. But it seems that irrespective of your standard of play, that you are intuitively able to make the uh, necessary adjustments to get the golf club back onto the golf ball. If your body is delivering you to a position where you have a chance to do that, that means that if you are swaying off the ball miles, standing up, dipping, doing all kinds of things to the body, which is simply changing the lowest point in the swing relative to where the golf ball is, it's getting very difficult. But if you can kind of command an axis over the golf ball, then you're in a very good place to start off with. If you think of it from the side camera as well, if you can allow your body to go into side bend your upper body so that you can actually get some kind of plane in your shoulders which is relative to the starting plane of the golf club at the, uh, in your address position, then you're also on to a good thing. But what is going to be very, very different in virtually every golfer is the amount of body and shoulder rotation that they are capable of achieving um, by the time they get into impact. And dependent on that position, your arms and hands are going to have to do the rest. And it can be as subtle as the spine angle Somebody in a relatively vertical spine angle, again, somebody who has a little bit of kind of tilt away from the target. And you will often see that players that have an awful lot of rotation, which is closing the club face relative to the, t to the target, will also have quite a bit of tilt away from the target. John Rahm is a perfect example of this, which allows them to get their hands extremely far forward, but will mean that they will probably have more flexion in impact in order to get the kind of balance between things in their swing which are opening the club face and things in their swing which are closing the club face. What it also means, however, is when we go to the hobby golfer side of things where there is virtually no rotation in hips and shoulders at impact, whether that be just physiologically because they can't do it, or maybe on a technical uh, level that they simply haven't practiced this or don't know that this is necessary, intuitively are really trying to hit the golf ball rather than move the golf ball to the target, then they are simply not going to be rotated and trying to get their hands into a position where they are leaning the shaft and getting flexion in the wrist is probably the worst thing that they could do. And this is probably where it's very, very difficult, especially for somebody who knows that their golf swing isn't, isn't great, to basically accept that what the arms and hands have to do is to make adjustments for what the body hasn't been able to do. And if you do that, although you won't hit it as far as Tiger Woods or Rory McIlroy, although you won't hit it maybe as straight as, as Garcia, 
you will hit it and you will hit it relatively straight for the distance that you're hitting. And obviously if you're hitting it shorter, you can allow yourself to hit it a little bit right and left because it's simply not gonna go as far and it's not gonna go f as far into the trouble as somebody who's bashing it 300 meters down the fairway. So what I'm basically saying to you is to get a, get a, a, a position where you are allowing your arms and hands almost intuitively to square the ball, or square the club face rather, onto the ball. So how are you going to do this? Well, maybe the first thing is to just look at what is actually happening with the arms and hands and how they are working relative to the body. And then it might become clear that obviously the way that you're moving your body uh, will have a massive effect on the way that you have to move your arms and hands. Now there's three main components when we're looking at the arms and hands and what they're doing with the golf club. Um, the first one is basically the rotation of the arms and hands, which will happen over the lower arms, also the upper arms to a certain extent, the shoulder joints. Um, and it will also happen in the way that we move our arms into our hands and wrists in what we call flexion and extension. Um, at the same time, you have what we call uh, deviation, radial and, and ulnar deviation. This is kind of this droop effect, which happens mainly because of the weight of the golf club um, and the forces of nature, which are pulling the club away from you and pulling the weighted head down, which is lifting the club up. And that will change to a certain extent the lie angle of the golf club um, at impact, which is one of the reasons why we get a golf club fitted so that it doesn't make a massive difference on the direction that the golf ball goes. Because if you have the club a little bit too upright, it will tend to start to the left of target for a right-handed golfer a little bit flat. It will start right of target. But the main things that we're looking at are basically the lower arm rotation and also the flexion and extension in the wrists. So when we actually look at the backswing part of the golf swing because you are going to hinge your wrist and you're going to bend your trail arm what you're actually doing is you're pulling the club out of the center of your chest it was virtually opposite the center of your chest your hands in the address position you're pulling them out and you're pulling them across your chest at the same time in order to keep the club on plane you are going to have a, a lower arm rotation for a right-handed golfer, a clockwise rotation, to actually get the golf club moving back and getting it parallel to the orig original a, uh, plane in the backswing. Holding it too tight will tend to kind of keep it on an almost too steep plane. It is similar then to obviously when you are changing direction that all of these things have got to do the opposite. The question is now, what, what are they doing? When are you going to go into the rotation of your lower arms in the opposite direction? Probably not so good if you do it at the top of your golf swing. When are you going to straighten that trail arm in order to get it back down and straight again? And this is gonna be dependent on how much rotation you have in your body. If your body were to return to its original position at impact, then wouldn't your arms and hands have to return to their original position at impact? We know this is not what the golf professionals are doing. They are returning to a position with their hips open or pointing towards the target at impact. They are returning to impact with a steeper shoulder angle and their chest pointing also towards the target. Therefore, the straightening of the trail arm and the rotating of the lower arms to get the club back square to the chest is happening a lot later. The combination of these movements then has to be judged to where your body is at impact and how far that you're actually able to turn which probably means we could do with some movement sensors on our body to say, well, how much rotation, especially in the center of your chest, is actually happened by the time you get the club back onto the golf ball. Because if you have closed your chest relative, turning to the target will actually close the club face. That is a number of degrees which will have to be worked out somewhere else because your arms are no longer in the center of your chest. As you rotate back to the ball, 
were they to stay there, how far would you actually have to rotate to get the club back to impact? And let's be perfectly honest, even the tour professionals aren't doing that amount of rotation before they get into impact. So it's really a question of how far are you rotating and are you allowing then your arms and hands to do the rest of the work? And I think in the modern teaching, an awful lot of teachers are trying to get you to do a lot of hip rotation, a lot of shoulder rotation and to keep your arms totally passive, almost to the point where you're taking them up, leaving them there and then pulling them down around you. And if you do that, I think you're going to have real problems in squaring the club face and getting a good contact on the golf ball. On the contrary, what you've got to be doing is allowing your arms to release the golf club. And although this will have the feeling of passive movement, of not necessarily hitting at the golf ball in the downswing, it will definitely give you a feeling of what the golf club is doing in your hands. You've got to have the feeling of what is almost like a slight kind of looping of the shaft and the head of the golf club during the golf swing in order to allow the right movement in your lower arms and in your wrists. And that would mean as you take the club back, the feeling of rotating your lower arms to get the club on plane even as you start the downswing if you start with your lower body is allowing your the rotation to continue as you start the downswing and then as you turn into impact allowing again the club to rotate in the opposite direction in order to close the face a similar thing should be going on with your wrists as you take the club back because of the original position of your wrist, which is in a slightly extended state, as you take the, back and, take the club back and rotate your lower arms, you always also want to have the feeling of allowing your, your lead wrist to go into flexion, bending back. I think everybody has seen this position at the top of the swing where the uh, lead wrist appears to be an extension of the forearm. And that's a good kind of feeling to get into. And as you start the downswing, that should continue not only the feeling of, of the club flattening, but also of this wrist going into flexion. So that when you get down to this kind of P6 position, this parallel position where your hips have probably stopped rotating and your shoulders have really started to slow down in their rotation, that you can allow your arms and hands to release through the golf ball and this release this, this flexion towards extension, although for a good player you won't be in extension, you'll still be in a certain amount of flexion at impact. For a poor player you may well have actually gone into extension because you will have to do that in order to keep the club face square at impact you might even have actually extended your trail arm totally by the time you get to impact. Again, something which is necessary because of the lack of rotation in your body, the lack of your body closing the club face, you are having to use your arms to close the club face. Otherwise, you're not going to find the golf ball. So it's not going to look very pretty, but it might well be necessary for your golf swing. And this is what we're talking about when we're teaching is maybe getting people to accept some of the things that they can't do so well in a golf swing and understand what they can't do so well in a golf swing and then allow other parts of their body, in this case the arms and the hands, to compensate for the failings of maybe your hips and your shoulders. Obviously, if you're trying to get into good positions, trying to actually get a more dynamic, more professional golf swing, then you've got to start with getting the body to rotate enough to stay in an axis over the ball, keep your, your shoulders in play, and then you are trying to really get this kind of catapult effect, really throwing the club round and through and allowing the release to happen totally naturally. 
as your shoulders slow down, as you reach round about this kind of P6 point. You don't have to actively do this, you've just got to let it happen. And I truly believe that if you're focused on the target, if you know in your inner eye where the club, the, the uh, flag is, then your unconscious will do the rest and it will square up the golf club with a combination of lower arm rotation and hinge. What hack motion is of most certainly showing us is there is not one perfect recipe. You cannot even say that uh, Dustin Johnson and Rory McIlroy and uh, Colin Morikawa are doing exactly the same thing. They're not. They're doing something differently, but they're getting very, very similar results. And it's very easy for us as teachers and for you as students to believe because the golf ball's flying straight and because they're finding it, they're all doing exactly the same thing. And one of the things that Hat Motion has shown us is most certainly they're not. And one of the reasons that they're probably not is because not all of their bodies are in exactly the same position um, in the impact moment and therefore their arms and hands simply can't do exactly the same thing to square the club face. I know it's quite a long one today. I hope you stayed with me to the end. Um, as ever, thank you very much to all of the patrons to the channel. Um, it's very expensive getting here and doing these videos at, at weekly. Um, and therefore, I thank you all for supporting the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, I shall leave a link below. Otherwise, it's a great help to me if you'll just hit that like button. And if you would uh, subscribe to the channel, that will help the algorithm to bring me to more people and get the word out there of how maybe uh, we can help you to play better golf in the future. Otherwise, I'll be back next Sunday as ever with a new one. Uh, until then, don't forget to leave comments below. If you're interested in getting feedback from me, I'll do my best to get round to answering the comments that you leave below. Until the next time, goodbye.